Hey guys, welcome to Dota Underlords advice video. Uh, this is one of my better matches that I've played. And just so far as like the RNG goes and stuff like that. Uh, you can see that I start off like a, a level 1 axe guy. And throughout this video you'll see I, I make like a, a warrior savage build. And uh, it's really good in the beginning of the game. Um, as you can see, like the, the RNG on this is just ridiculous. I just get everything that I need throughout the beginning, except for a couple rounds. But uh, basically what I've learned from playing Dota, I think I have about 50 matches or so, maybe under my belt around there. I think I'm like Outlaw level 3 or something. But uh, I've learned that, you know, like this planning ahead for the next round or, you know, or getting your build early in the game is imperative to having a good match. So, like, I get really lucky on this. As you'll see, I keep getting, you know, upgrades and stuff. And at the end, I believe I have, like, five three-star uh, characters. And uh, you'll see here, like, I grab this Bruce of the Martyr over the Claymore. And I put it on the Tiny. Because when Tiny takes damage, he, you know, he does a stun, which is really good for helping to, uh, you know, just get some extra DPS in while the, the enemy's frozen. You know, when they're stunned. Just like the Hex works with the Shaman. Anytime you can take enemies out of the match, it's really good. Um, during this round 5, I kind of make a decision. I see these Tusks up here. I see the Tiny, and I'm kind of hesitant on it at first, but then I'm just like, well, let me get one out here, you know. I can get an extra guy out there, and that starts the, the Savage, but also adds, you know, another Warrior to the uh, to the equation there. And as you can see, I do fairly well since I have, uh, on the right over there, I have a brawny perk and the, uh, the warrior perk. If you see the, uh, the walrus punch, that's a really good move that, uh, Tusk has. It's like, it's like a stun slash interrupt, and it really helps out. Um, basically what I've noticed, though, is you need to save... Like about like round eight or nine, and you want to start saving gold so you can get ahead a financially in the game um, once the uh, the neutral rounds come around. So you always start the game off. You're gonna have three neutral rounds in the beginning. Those are just loot and you know grab some characters and stuff. But uh, as you're playing, you want to make sure you're paying attention to what round you're on, what round's gonna come up. That way you can you know save some extra cash and uh, use the interest for that to fuel later your uh, little uh, match efforts. So you can see there, like, this guy, he's got uh, some druid stuff going on, which is pretty OP, since they up the star levels pretty easy. We're just kind of mowing these guys down. I got a couple close matches in the beginning. I think in this one, though, I won 30, 30 rounds. So that's really good, even though in the end I didn't win. But, uh, like, this is round nine. I believe that I buy the Pudge and I upgrade to put him out in the field. Right? I wouldn't have done that, but it was a good move just to keep, uh, to keep ahead. You know, because if I didn't have that extra guy out there who knows how the things would have played out. But round nine, round ten is another loot round. You fight the neutrals and you grab, uh, a piece of gear, and you kind of just want to go with whatever you got. So you got a bunch of warriors and stuff like that. You can get things that boost health, reduce damage, you know, and kind of make a bunch of tanks. But uh, since here I had the Savage pop up, and I know I'm going to be using Savages, the Lycan, and the, and the Tusk, I grabbed the Tooth and Claw for the extra damage, since I already had the two perks from the uh, two Savages I have. See here, I keep grabbing characters, I keep upgrading. Things are going really good in round 11. Uh, the positioning on this comp too is really uh, is really simple because pretty much you don't have to worry about people jumping behind you. You just want to get to the battle as fast as possible. So that's why my front line is like that. You know, it's all the way pushed up. That way, if they do have range, they're not sitting there getting a few extra hits in, which could you know lead a character to die before it needs to. So that is just amazing right there. I got bam. I got four two stars on the board right now and a two star in the bank. So, I really want to push that to put him out there to get some extra damage and to get an extra tank out there. 
the war the warrior uh, axe or whatever his name is he's really good because he taunts so if you stack him with like damage reducing stuff and he taunts like their big dps or even their tanks it can really help you uh get around and to uh you know win the match that's what it's all about it's winning the matches and stuff um so far as the re-rolling goes i don't really re-roll that much unless it's like right after a loot round which are you know rounds 10 15 and every five rounds so forth but uh i try to try to be conservative with the money and kind of like you know balance that so just keep that in mind whenever you are playing that you need to just pay attention to your money pay attention to what round it is pay attention to uh you know what the other teams are using so far as character goes you can change your position accordingly accordingly sorry <laughs> Like, I know this dog round, I've played a couple matches where I've had casters in the back, and I always jump to the back. And usually don't lose it, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult. Now, this Octarine Essence, I like the wall response, so I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to put it on Tusk, right? And that really helps out to uh, to get his wall response to keep going and going every time it comes up. He's not waiting on the cooldown, he can do it as long as he's got the mana, which since he's on the front line, usually he's taking damage anyway. Um, Pudge is kind of like my oddball, but he has a grappling hook, which can be good to grapple, like, say, that Enchantress right there. I don't believe it happens this round, but if, say, you know, he was getting attacked by some assassins and he pulled the Enchantress back there and everybody turned around and killed the Enchantress, that would take the healer out of the game and the, the DPS from the Enchantress. So RNG is pretty solid on here. You can see I'm, I'm grabbing axes, I'm grabbing Pudges and Tinies. Just left and right. They're just really blessing me on this one. Um, the comps that I'm facing aren't really terrible, but I wouldn't say that they're OP. Like this one is a, is a troll one. You can see he's got that warlord back there just going ham, but still it's the amount of HP and stuff like that that I have just really just puts me in there. And like now, you know, round 18, I got a three-star axer. And I'm about to have another two-star replace it. So that was really good. I got a three-star axer and a two-star uh, tiny out of that deal to replace the open slot with. Like you see, it's round 18. If you look at my goal compared to the others, I have the most gold except for Makaroto, which is the guy below me. This guy ends up defeating me at the end. So just using that strategy of having that money in the bank, I think it only works up to 50 gold. So like every 10 gold, you get one gold per round extra for the interest. Now on here too, you got to realize your level, what was just showing right there, their level allows you to get access to higher tiered units. So if you're trying to get, you know, a couple of the more powerful units that come later, you're going to want to try to get your level up, but you don't want to level up so much to where you drain your gold and you don't have the ability to purchase and reroll to find the units you need to upgrade their star levels. So always make sure you're, you're paying attention to that. That mechanism I grabbed is good for like the healing it gives once the, the target reaches 50%. And since he's a tank, he's a good person to put it on. But uh, you see right there, I upgraded another tusk. So the way my lineup's sitting right now, I had the potential to have, you know, a couple, uh, a couple three stars later on. Now I'm just grabbing those few units and saving them. Towards the end, I do something a little unorthodox with the Dragon Knight, but it was more of an act of desperation than, you know, a real strategy. <laughs> Another good comp you can use is, like, you can stack knights. But uh, in the beginning, like, the druids are really good. And if you look at this right here, I mean, that's just, that's just amazing. Boom, three-star tiny, let's go, you know. And then I can throw this other Juggernaut in there, so now my damage goes up. Because that's the main problem with having warriors that are tanky, is that your damage kind of stays low. And if you look at this guy, he's got a good defensive line right here. This is also the guy that ends up beating me. I just think that my star level kind of just, you know, gave me the advantage on him. Because his comp in the end is better than the one that I have. And that's the Druid one. Uh, the Lycan would have been the only thing I really could have got more of out of this match. 
to make it better. I think I get the lichen later on to, to rank three, but it, it's too little too late. You know what I mean? The damage has already been set. And you'll see that here in, a, in momentarily. But if you look at the matches, they're just going by really, really quick. Uh, a lot of the people, they're just too far behind to really keep a stand on the match. And you know, this game is based off RNG, so a lot of them might not have had the opportunity to. This is round 25. Doing the same thing. We got 52 gold, so we're going to get an extra 5 gold from doing this. And then we can splurge afterwards. Pick up the Vanguard, since I got a lot of tanks. Put that on one of my tanks. I moved the mechanism over there because the the lichen takes a lot of damage, so that heal will pop off quickly. You want that heal to, to, to get in there as, as quick as possible. See, so, you know, hit 50% and it'll heal. Oh, maybe it doesn't this round. Okay. But anyways, you know, we're tearing them up. We haven't lost a round yet. Which is really good, but whenever you have a comp that's strong in the beginning, if you don't plan to, you know, to alter it to where it's really overpowered later on, that little advantage you have from just having higher star levels and, and you know, and being a little tankier wears off as the, the better the comps get. You'll see right here. That Lycan does a lot of damage, but that, uh, that was a bounty hunter is one of the highest DPS in the game. And the cool thing about it, it jumps in the back, so it's a really good one to, to grab if you plan on building like an assassin type comp. I believe he's an assassin. Like here I could have had a choice and like, you know, picked up Venom, uh, Venomancers and maybe replace the Pudge and reduce my armor and stuff like that to to build up more of like a, a, a DPS so there would actually be damage going out that was ridiculous instead of just the slow kills that I've had right here. Which they seem faster only because they're uh, it's on two times. So When you put it into perspective, I, I, have, I have to maintain the momentum of the RNG I had in the beginning to make this comp work. And it's, it's really hard to do, but uh, sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't like I got really lucky in the beginning and then towards the end you can see I don't have as many upgrades and as many options one because I already have a, a couple three stars a few three stars and two you know what I mean some of the characters that I'm looking for like the lichen are tier three characters which don't spawn as often so they're harder to get to that third star rating now in this one I made a poor choice and I think I grabbed the vicious intent I should have grabbed a Skull Basher to add extra stun. Since I have a stun comp, I've got the uh, the Tiny with the stun and the Walrus with the stun. I should have grabbed the Skull Basher, and that would have really helped me out with an extra stun there. And maybe you place it on either one of the Juggernauts or the Lycans. Or the Lycan, I mean. But, uh... As you can see, I mean, I don't, I don't get completely shut out of the RNG, but I do definitely take some hits on it. Right here is where we kind of start seeing the tides turn, and we start seeing, you know, the weaknesses in my comp. Once he gets the, once he gets the dragon in there, and his characters are a little more tanky, it's harder for me to maintain the damage that I was doing whenever they were really, you know, uh, uh, lower HP and you know had lower armor and stuff like that. So that's one thing you have to be careful with with a uh, when you play with warriors. You got to kind of balance them out with some higher damage in the back. Like right now, I've got three pudges in the back, which really doesn't mean anything because one of them's a one star and the other two are just you know kind of there just hanging out for uh, interruption. One thing that's really good about Pudge though is like I said, he'll grab a character and bring them, but it can also work against you. Because uh, it can save uh, one of their characters from actually uh, getting killed. And that's happened a couple times, as you can see. But here towards the end, it just becomes sort of sort of one side. I, I just lose the rest of the matches. 
And that's also because, if you notice, I spent a lot of my gold. So I don't have that financial backing to be able to keep my momentum up at all. So that's one thing I can advise against, is spending all of your gold at any given time. I was doing it more as, uh, as an act of desperation because I noticed I was starting to lose. And uh, you'll see here, I think, the actual, the last attempt. I, I grab a Dragon Knight, and I uh, I try to use the Dragon Knight as sort of like a... Uh, I, I don't want to say it, like it, it increased the synergy of the group, but it really has no alliance bonuses. But he does do a lot of damage, and he does take a lot of damage. So he's a really good character. Um, one thing I could have done right here, like looking back, is just grabbed a demon to up the, up the damage. Demons are really good if you had just one of them. It does 50% uh, extra damage. So even though it might only be a one star, if it's not getting killed immediately, it's still doing a, a pretty decent bit of damage. I grabbed that. That was a Dagon, and it does, uh, I think it's 500 damage to a character once they reach 50 H 50 percent HP and I put it on uh, one of the lichens down there like this might have saved me if I were able to upgrade that lichen to level three but at the same time I think two two stars is better than one level three and I didn't really have anything to replace it with towards the end as you'll see here so I went from getting or from crushing people to getting crushed fairly quickly. And I upgrade him, and I have to throw the other character out, and that's where I grab the Dragon Knight. Um, the only thing I, I really could have done there is sold the Pudge, bought the Bat Rider, and replaced one, the one star Pudge with the Bat Rider. Looking back now, but uh, in the end, I don't think it would have. The damage reduction just wouldn't have. It wouldn't have mattered. I definitely would have needed way more DPS. As you can see, he's just destroying me at this point. And this being the last match, I think I buy the Abaddon just to get the, the the buff from the the blood sport and stuff like that, or the blood boil or whatever it is. That little green shattered heart looking thing. But uh, it increases the damage of all your other characters that have that by 100% once one of them dies. Does that be an end of the match? It was a really good good match. It was really great. You know what I mean? Two best people came out on top. Anyways, I hope you learned some stuff from that video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again. Like and subscribe. See more.